Hey fam, we're going to go ahead and get a little fancy in the kitchen tonight, if that's all right with you. Tonight, we are going to make some wild Chilean sea bass that we picked up from Costco's. We're going to treat this fish right. We're going to cook it on the stove top. Now, one thing you are going to need is some good old wine. We got some Chardonnay here. I'm going to go ahead and pour me a drink so we can go ahead and get this party started. And let's get cooking. All right. So I went on ahead and unpackaged the fish. This was the sea bass that we bought on our last Costco's haul where we showed you how to freeze up all of those meats and things. It still smells good. It still smells nice and fresh. And you want to make sure you pet this fish nice and dry. And this is going to be enough to feed all of us. We are a family of six. So this is more than enough. This is the perfect thing that we wanted to make for you guys. I'm quite sure that if you was to go to your favorite restaurant, you're going to spend at least like $30, $40 on this dish right here anyway. So why not make it at home? Okay. All right. So now we're ready to go ahead and season it up. I'm going to take some kosher salt. I always like to put some in the bowl right here. So that way I can see exactly how much I'm using because I can't really tell just by pouring it out the box. And then we also are going to take some cracked black pepper. Make sure you hold your hand up high so that we can get the season on evenly. And you want to, you know, and then make sure you add enough. You want to be liberal with the seasoning because this is a big piece of sea base. And we want to make sure we taste that all the way through. Now we're going to season it with some pepper. And we're keeping the seasonings real simple today. We're going to let the fish do all the work. I know that's kind of hard to believe. It's just using salt and pepper, but that's all we need. You're going to go ahead and flip your fish over. And we're going to season the other side. The daddy would be out here helping me, but he back there watching a new Dave Chappelle show on Netflix. So once you see how good this plate look, he gonna be like, um, did you order Uber Eats or DoorDash? We'll be doing tonight. Nope, we cooked this right in the house. We didn't order out at all. Okay, go ahead and get out another little pack. Also, you're gonna need some flour because we're gonna lightly coat this fish. We're not gonna deep fry the fish. We just wanna get a nice crust on it. So grab some flour. On the medium high heat, we're gonna go ahead and add some oil. So now we're going to take our fish and just lightly, just tap. Like I said, we're not frying this fish. Just tap it in there. Okay. That's it. We just want to get a nice crust on it. So once we turn it and flip it in the pan, you get that nice golden brown look. And that's all you want. I'm going to test the grease. Just throw a little bit of flour in the pan. And it is ready to go ahead and drop our fish. You want to make sure that grease is nice and hot. All right. We're going to let that fish just cook for a minute. Again, the heat is on a medium high heat. And we're going to do it about three to four minutes on each side. And then we're going to flip it. So you can see the size of the fish is starting to get that nice brown color on the bottom, which means it's almost time to flip it. Now, I don't have one of those fish spatulas that Gordon Ramsay and all the other chefs be using. So we're going to carefully flip this fish over. We did a good job. That's how I think. Okay. That look good. Now, we're only going to cook two at a time. For the bigger pieces, I'm probably only going to cook one at a time just to give it enough space in the pan. But these are looking pretty good, y'all. And just like scrapple or anything else, once the fish is ready to release from the bottom of the pan, it's going to release on its own because we did put that flour on it. So if you try to move it around now, you're going to notice that the fish is going to stick to the pan. That means it's not ready to move yet. So you can tell that this fish is almost done. It got that nice milky color to it. And you can still see those seasonings from our pepper. So we're going to take this off in about another 45 seconds because we don't want to overcook this fish. So I'm going to go ahead and put the fish on this rack right here so it doesn't get soggy on the bottom. Because that would defeat the purpose of us making that crust. Is to get your fish all soggy again on the bottom. We're 
we're gonna go ahead and repeat the process for the next batch How it's starting to break apart on its own that's how you know it's done a fish i don't know how they got this shape out of this dang on sea bass but now this fish is going to rest while we go ahead and make the soles so let's get to that part because i'm excited all right so let me tell you about the sauce this sauce was supposed to be this nice creamy velvety lemon butter wine sauce and i mean we had the wine we had the shallots the capers the butter everything for the sauce the heavy cream and oil now i don't know where in the process but somehow i effed the sauce up i mean like i effed it up i mean it was looking so perfect in the beginning and then towards the end it ended up like this but you know what? It's okay. We can't always be Julia Childs in the kitchen with our sauces. But we're going to practice. And the next time we come on here, it's going to be perfect. But we still are going to use this sauce because it ended up being a nice brown butter sauce that's still popular to use on fish. Because waste not, want not, and it's still bomb. All right? Delicious. 